NASCAR fans, we have a local driver in the Cup Series that you can now cheer for. We will welcome in Matt Tift, who is getting ready to compete in a race in Atlanta. Matt, appreciate the time very much. I know you're busy getting ready for the race this weekend. Tell me a little bit about the dream that came true last weekend, the Daytona 500. That's what everybody who drives a stock car dreams of doing. You did it last weekend. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy, really. Uh, you know, last weekend, being a part of the Daytona 500 has been a dream of mine since I was a little kid and grew up a NASCAR fan. So uh, it was a great experience. Unfortunately, we got cut up in the big one, which looms at uh, Daytona. You never know when it's quite going to hit. But um, it was certainly an awesome experience. And to get my first cup start there and, and my first Daytona 500 was really special. So uh, we certainly made it close to the end there, but it wasn't the end result we wanted. But uh, the whole experience was just awesome. And, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we got another one uh, this weekend, though. That's the great thing uh, about it is you get to rebound and come back quickly. So we're here in Atlanta. Uh, we'll be racing on Sunday. So it, it turns around quick. So you get those uh, peaks and valleys, you got to smooth them out because there's all kinds of uh, ups and downs in this sport. Now, Matt is from Hinkley, Ohio, a 2014 graduate of Highland High School. How does a kid from Highland High School get interested in being a NASCAR driver? And you move quickly through the ranks. Yeah, so my uh, my dad, he owned a, um, a race car up in Michigan, and his family was from up there. So we go up and watch the dirt races uh, over there, kind of on you know summer vacations and trip uh, and stuff. We take trips up there. So I got my early interest then when I was probably five or six, just going to the track. And uh, we started going to some of the cup races down at Homestead, Miami, in around 2003. So uh, we started going once every year, and I just loved it. And uh, then they had a, a trial over at the Barberton Speedway. And they had some go-karts over there you could go and try out. So I was probably 10 or 11. I begged my parents to go let me do it. And uh, I did it. And they're like, hey, this is really something you should look into doing. And so, uh, you know, went into go-kart racing, started at Barberton and uh, Thompson over by Dragway 42. And uh, did that for a few years to the regional and national ranks of it and won some races. And I uh, kind of looked for that next step of, hey, where do we go from here? Because there's actually road course go-karts. So I always wanted to get to the circle track side. So I did a little bit of dirt racing, but I uh, transitioned over to asphalt and raced down in Florida and the Great Lakes and the Wisconsin area. And so from that point on, just kind of did the late model stuff. Again, local, regional, national level, and eventually moved up into the uh, ARCA series and some of the lower divisions of NASCAR and worked our way up here to the, uh, the top of the... Uh, racing you know series here so it's it's pretty crazy how fast it's gone um but it's it's certainly been quite a ride now you you drive the car number 36 is there any significance to that number if so what it what is it yeah so uh the 36 number the um t our team front row motorsports they had the 34 and the 38 car before so it kind of fit in the sequence of numbers but also uh, my mentor um for many years was kenny schrader and i raced for him uh, in the ARCA racing series. And he was a former cup series driver. And so uh, he actually had the number 36 back in the day. So even though it wasn't chosen by me, it was pretty cool to, uh, you know, still be running his number here today. And, uh, you know, to whatever your number is, it's pretty special to have that be your, your uh, cup number, the one you represent and all the guys that put the hard work in behind it. Um, let's talk a little bit about what you went through in 2016. A scary thing. Anytime you hear, you know, brain tumor, it's a scary thing. You were out of racing, but only for, you know, three, four months. Take me through what that was like and, and how you came back and, and what you like doing now because of, you know, what you went through. Sure. Yeah. So um, in 2016, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor and I had some symptoms coming up um, periodically and it eventually just became an everyday thing to where I had bad migraines and light sensitivity and, and these weird voices and stuff I'd hear. Uh, but the thing that got me the most was that uh, I was starting to take, you know, five or six Excedrin a day. And it was just kind of getting to the point where it's just too much. And I was kind of asking questions of why that was going on. So I actually got an erect for a back injury and was going to get an MRI. And I talked to the doctor about, hey, maybe I can get this checked out while I'm here. And so he uh, had me stay in the MRI. And sure enough, there's a brain tumor there and was diagnosed with it. And at that point, I was pulled out of the race car and uh, had a half dollar sized tumor. Uh, taken out of my head and went through a, a really tough recovery process, even though it was only three months. Uh, it was just you know, kind of excruciating the the process of just, you know, relearning everything. Everything I did from going to a restaurant or going to a mall, hearing music, 
it would just have the feeling of imprinting into my head where that part was cut out. So it was really tough um, just kind of relearning everything and how my body would respond to it. And it took about a year for me to really feel like I was back to me. Um, so the great thing is now, though, I'm coming up on three years uh, since then in July. So I've been given a clean bill of health. I get a MRI checkup about uh, once every year, but it's certainly been great, the recovery process. And now I become an advocate for brain tumor research and awareness and have gone to uh, Capitol Hill and uh, talked to congressmen and women about you know getting funding for research and awareness for uh, brain tumors and trying to get more uh, treatments for those who are affected by them. Matt, we appreciate the time. We'll let you get back. I know you, you've got some practice to do and some things to do. Uh, make a deal with you. First top 10 finish, okay. you come back on and we talk about it. Good enough? That, that's fine. you got to take me to B-Spot, though, too. All right. You're on. So Matt <laughs> Tift, we appreciate the time so much. Good luck this Sunday in Atlanta as uh, Matt Tift from Highland.